welcome to season two of The Director's Chair. I'm your host, Alicia Saeed, and I'm so glad you're tuning in. This episode, we're featuring Mitchell Turner and his film, Punchline. Let's get started right after this break. episode off with a new section called Staff Picks, where a member of the crew tells us about their favorite movie. I'm here today with Tristan. Welcome to the show. So, what movie are you telling us about? So today I'm going to be telling you about uh, True Stories by David Byrne. Okay, what is this about? So it's about a small town in Texas that's celebrating its 100th year anniversary, and it's about the quirky and uh, very interesting inhabitants of the town. It's also a musical comedy. Ooh, so why is it your favorite movie? Uh, well, it's not the it's not my favorite movie in a technical aspect like you know better movies have been made but like the whole the feeling I get from it is like pure warm happiness like I'm laughing with the movie not looking down on anyone the songs are amazing everything just comes together perfectly oh, that's so great to hear yeah well that's wonderful I'll definitely have to check that one out well we'll be right back with this week's film Everyone deserves to have a decent place to live. Everyone. Bivang Manui. Todos. When a future homeowner partners with Habitat for Humanity to build or improve a home, they build a better future for themselves and their families. For my family. Para po sa familia. For mi familia. With a little help, we all have the potential to stand on our own. Through shelter, we empower. Visit Habitat.org to provide help to families like these today. Time is the one thing that we want more of as a St. Jude parent. Without the donors, I wouldn't have my Audrey. El que San Jude no cobra ni un centavo para nosotros significa quitarnos todo ese estrés, esa preocupación y podernos enfocar en nuestra hija. That was the first thing I was like, how are we going to do this? When they told us that we didn't have to pay a single bill, I was like, wow. They pretty much have saved us. They take care of our housing. They take care of our food. In addition to the best medical treatment that my daughter could ever have. <laughs> so it allows me to focus on my daughter and getting her better. Welcome back! Now, let's take a look at Punchline, a film about a comedian dealing with a very tough heckler. <laughs> Woo, so do we have any addicts in the house tonight? Uh, show of hands? Nobody? Come on, we're all friends here. Don't be scared. None? No potheads? No junkies? So you're telling me we don't have any crankers, yankers, smackers, dusters? So you're telling me that we don't have any stoners, blazers, looters, shooters, geekers, or tweakers in here? <laughs> Come on, this is America. We invented addiction. <laughs> mm, yeah, people usually don't like to talk about that one. Addiction. But it's okay, you know? No one has to be ashamed. I'm not. I'm addicted to all kinds of things. No guilt at all. I'm a crack addict? No. I'm a rock collector. <laughs> Shopping addiction? No. I'm a bargain hunter. Alcoholic? No. I enjoy wine tasting. <laughs> Compulsive liar? No. I'm a stand-up comedian. <laughs> uh, here's one for you. What's the difference between an addiction and a hobby? A hobby is socially acceptable, right? Now, just imagine for a second my name is Larry, and I've got a terrible craving for golf. So I go to an HA meeting, that's Hobbyist Anonymous, 
and I say, I can't give up my golf hobby. Every chance I get, I'm out there on the greens whacking balls around. Whenever I don't play, I get all cold and clammy and nauseous. <laughs> my golf hobby is so bad, it costs me my family, my job, my house. My golf hobby is so bad, I had to give up my coke hobby. <laughs> you should give up comedy. Oh, hey, oh, we got a live one in the audience tonight. Where you at, sir? You suck. Oh, there you are. Uh, what's your name, man? You suck. You suck, man. That must have been a rough childhood. Uh, you suck. Come to dinner. You suck. Stop kissing the dog. Wherefore art thou? You suck. <laughs> uh, hecklers are the best, aren't they? Like, what makes you think you could talk to me while I'm on stage? And it's just with stand-up, right? No other profession? It's not a profession. Uh, you do a great impression of my father. I'm more disappointed than he is. That's great. Maybe you should make like my dad and leave. You're not worth my time anyways. Aw, oh, he's leaving and we were just getting to know each other. Goodbye, you suck. Bye. <laughs> you must be late for the night shift at Denny's. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry to anyone that works at Denny's. It's a noble pursuit. <laughs> How was the set? It was fine. A few more people than last time. You got a letter in the mail. People still send letters? It's from Tom. Tom. Your agent, Tom. Oh, that Tom. Must be about the special. I hope so. Some special money would be really nice right about now. What's wrong? You don't like living in a apartment on the sketchy side of town? What's it say? Uh, Adam says he's almost got the special. Should be any day now. Mm. Seems like he could have just called. Uh, yeah, you think so? Uh, so how was your day? Oh God, let's see. I had this really old guy come in with his daughter. Well, I thought it was his daughter, but it was actually his wife. I would say there was at least a 30 year age gap. Honestly, probably closer to 40. Anyway, I was talking to the new receptionist about it. You remember the new receptionist? Anyway, she thought that it was his daughter too. <laughs> uh, has one of your friends ever said anything to you that makes you question your friendship? Like, I was having lunch the other day with my dentist friend. He's not a dentist. It's just I see him every six months and have to be sedated to get through it. But we're eating spaghetti and I asked him about his new girlfriend. And I said, how's the relationship? He said, oh, she's great. She's tall, blonde, nice, but she's schizophrenic. I said, oh, she's schizophrenic? Oh, that must be so hard for you, man. How are you dealing with it? He said, well, actually, I'm thinking about breaking up with her. I said, oh, no, why's that? He looks me dead in the eyes and says, she won't stop seeing other men. <laughs> Get some new jokes. Get some new jokes, come on man, I'm cranking these out as fast as I can. I'm just getting started. Oh, hey, I remember you. Uh, this guy was in here the other night. So you thought my show was good enough to see a second time, huh? I wanted to see if it could get any worse. One time heckling, you know, maybe you're drunk or something. By the second time, I think you're starting to like me. I want my money back. You know, that's an interesting point. I would love to give you a refund, but I don't think America negotiates with terrorists. Nobody's laughing. Nobody's laughing because you keep interrupting. D does anyone want this gentleman to leave? Uh, show of hands, show of hands, please. Yeah, one, two, three, 
round up, carry the seven. Uh, yep, that's everyone. No one's on your side here. Just go. Yeah, take your drink. Right out the door. Bye. Whew, thank God for democracy. Uh, God bless America. <laughs> uh, uh, where was I? You suck! Get some new jokes! You don't have to come to my fing show. Fuck! tonight I don't want to talk about it what why what happened we can talk about it tomorrow I'm just really tired okay fine whatever you say do you think I'm good what like a good person no, like, good at my job. Hello? You smell like smoke. I'm sorry, I've been really stressed out lately. It's not gonna be a permanent thing. You promised you quit. I, I know. After next week, I'm done. I promise. Do we know anybody in a black muscle car? No, I don't think so. Why? No reason. Yup, big time astrophobic. Uh, that's the fear of space for those of you watching at home. Now, it sounds stupid, but if you're not afraid of space, you're just not thinking hard enough. Like, we live on a giant pile of dirt in the middle of an endless vacuum. Our primary source of light and heat is a giant ball of radiation that's at least three football fields away from Earth. <laughs> you know how long the Earth has been around? Bums me out, man. I'm gonna be dead before all the cool stuff happens in the universe. Like, I'll never get to see the inside of a black hole, or I'll never get to see the white dwarves die. <laughs> okay. That sounds really bad. I sound not only racist, but also like I hate little people. Allow me to clarify. I won't get to see the white dwarf stars die. Nope, that doesn't help. Now it just sounds like I hate small white celebrities. <laughs> hey. Hey. Oh. Hey. You want to tell me what you're doing in here at 3 a.m.? Just practicing some new jokes. What? In the middle of the night? Yeah, well, I couldn't sleep, so... Okay, can you please turn that off? It's really loud. I can't. Why? I almost have it. Have what? The punchline. Okay. Well, I have to go to work in a few hours, so I'm gonna turn it off. No. I can't sleep while this is playing. Okay. I'm sorry? Okay. Okay? I'm going to work in the morning? My real job where I make real money? What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. No, say it. I'm going back to bed. You don't think I'm trying to make money? I think you're trying, I just... You want me to quit? 
You want me to quit? No, I don't want you to quit. But we can't pay rent with drink vouchers and petty cash. I've been working my ass off while you try to make this work, but I can't keep carrying us both like this. Especially if I can't get any sleep. Sorry, I, I didn't mean... No. You know what? It's fine. Leave it on. Vanessa. I know you lied to me. About the special, I found the letter in the trash. Vanessa, can we just talk about I'm it? I'm gonna stay at my sister's. We'll do anything out of spite. It's what separates us from the animals. Uh, your doctor tells you to start eating better. You start chowing down on fried chicken and sticks of butter. Your girl tells you to get a haircut, so you get dreads and you grow a porn stash. <laughs> I don't even bother with a personal trainer anymore. I just hire a guy to keep insulting me until I start working out. <laughs> uh, come on, my knees can lift more than that. Uh, this isn't even doing anything. You should just go home. Uh, maybe people would actually like you if you were in better shape. <laughs> maybe people would laugh. Oh shoot, I missed my session last week. Looks like my trainer followed me here. Get off the stage! Look here, buddy. I only have five minutes left. That's it. Then you can be as ignorant as you want. You've been at all my shows the past week yelling dumb shit, and I am tired of it. I'm tired of your show! Listen! No, you listen! You stand up there and you tell lies. You lie to us and you lie to yourself. The only thing funny about this is that you think you can make it. Get the hell out then. Security, can we get this guy out of here? I can't deal with him anymore. Thank you.
and we'll be right back with Mitchell Turner. I never imagined this would be your first home. I feel powerless. I can't stop asking why us. I just want to hug and kiss you and never let go. This is the hardest thing we've ever faced. I know it's even harder on you. You are my little fighter. We're here with you. I believe in you. Just four simple words. But to a child in need, they mean the world. When you support a child through Save the Children, you're saying, I believe in you. Visit sponsor.savethechildren.org slash believe today. And we're back with Mitchell Turner, the director of Punchline. Welcome to the show. So first off, what inspired you to tell the story that you did? Um, well, Punchline, I started um, at a time in my life when I was really uh, kind of stuck between two options, kind of career paths. and. Um, it's, it's really a story about indecisiveness and kind of uh, stagnation. So um, that, that was what the, the film really came out of, uh, was that time in my life. Okay, so you and the crew built the stage set that Mason performs from. So what sort of challenges did this ambitious project provide for you guys? Yeah, so the stage uh, is actually still in my garage. Really? <laughs> Believe it or not, yeah. Um, so we had Alec, um, one of the, the guys helping with it. Um, Chris was our production designer. Okay. Uh, and then Gracie hung these great curtains up in the back. Um, so it, it turned out really well. Um, I, was, I was honestly surprised at how much really? it looked, yeah, <laughs> looked like a stage. But. So did you guys have like to create any other unique props that just came out of the film? Uh, not really props. We kind of had to you know, juggle locations with uh, trying to make it, you know, a comedy club uh, interior and then an apartment and then we had to shoot in a parking garage. So it was just kind of like all over the place. All over the place. So what was the writing process like? Like, did you guys just sit around like a laughing track playing until the script just came to you or did y'all have any help from something? Yeah, um, I mean, I did watch some stand up uh, while I was writing. Um, okay, yeah. But yeah, it, it took a while. I just kind of put it on the back burner for, you know, a couple of years. Um, but uh, yeah, it it um, it really just came down to watching some stand up and uh, some other films like, that I kind of took inspiration. Getting inspiration from that yeah. and stuff. Okay. So in the climax of the film, Punchline's main antagonist, the heckler, is revealed to actually be Mason's like inner critic. So was this element actually rooted in your own struggles as a creator? Um, I mean, I think to a certain extent, um, like I said earlier, it's just, you know, I was at a point in my life where I, I kind of was torn between two paths. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, I think everybody can kind of relate to that uh, creatively, just um, always having kind of a, a voice of self-doubt inside. Yeah, I get that. So the score of Punchline is one of its most important elements. So what inspired its unique sound? Uh, so we looked at several things uh, kind of for reference to that. Uh, all credit goes to Rachel uh, Owens, who did the score. Uh, she did an amazing job. Um, so we looked at The House from Netflix, which, uh, okay. yeah, so that's kind of a quirky little film. Fun, yeah. But, um, yeah, and then uh, Persona uh, from Ingmar Berg Bergman, that was another inspiration, kind of just these uh, kind of drawn out uh, strings and like things. Like a mixture of yeah. things around. Okay. What's your favorite all-time movie? Like, it doesn't have to inspire you or anything, just a favorite. Yeah, so I'm actually an annoying film guy. Uh, <laughs> I, I'd never say a favorite of all time, but uh, I usually just say something I've seen recently that I like a lot. Yeah, I'm like that too. Yeah, so uh, recently I've seen, I saw a film uh, called Beautiful by Alejandro Iñárritu. I hope I cool. said that right. But cool. um, yeah, it was 
it was really beautiful. Um, you know, cinematography was great. Um, and it had um, Javier Bardem, which is one of my favorites. Oh. So, yeah. so do you have any other projects that you're working on currently right now? Um, I mean, a few things on the back burner. I've been really busy at work, but um, yeah, hopefully I can uh, start getting into that stuff on the weekends and uh, yeah. really pump out some new stuff. Okay, and so what advice do you wish somebody had given you when you first started filmmaking? Um, I mean, I've heard it a lot, but honestly, just um, starting is, is the really important thing. Um, it's really daunting a lot of times when you're looking at kind of the scope of a project and what you yeah. need to do but um yeah just just starting and uh seeing where it goes from there is really important <laughs> okay that, that's good yeah we'll be right back after a break chef patty here why should you include avocados as part of your family's balanced diet it's as simple as one two three <laughs> <laughs> number one Avocados contain unsaturated fats. Good fats your body needs to help with the absorption of key nutrients. Me hungry right now. Ah. Number two. Oh, avocados are good for you. Avocados are naturally cholesterol and sodium free, plus they contain nearly 20 vitamins and nutrients. Me need vitamins and nutrients. And number three, avocado delicious. Try avocados oh. in place of ingredients higher in saturated fat. Avocados taste great in sandwiches, salads, and even in baked goods like cookies. Avocado cookies? This match made in heaven! Hey Mitchell, I have a joke for you. Okay. Okay, so have you heard the one about the TV host and the film director who were planning to go to a party? But they weren't quite sure what to eat on the way, so they tried the drive through at McDonald's along the way. Mm. But the line is wrapped all around the building, right? Mm. So they clearly don't have that kind of time, so they go somewhere else. But the line, once again, is wrapped all around the building. This happens a couple more times, and the two of them decide that they'll just subsist off the snacks of the party, right? Okay. So they arrive at the party, and they find out that everyone who's entering needs a wristband, right? Mm -hmm. Once again, the line to get the wristband reaches out the door of the venue and around the corner. But there's no choice but to wait, right? So after they get in the venue, the dude immediately hits the snack table, just like the entry door. The line is absurd, okay? Uh, so what do they do? Uh, do they eat each other? No, it's not that kind of party, okay? Anyway, the director and the host decide to wait in the line. Mm -hmm. And after 30 minutes, they emerge with plates full of little sandwiches and stuff, right? Okay. But the sandwiches are just so dry, right? So while they're in the line, though, the host saw a punch bowl. So she offers to get the two of them glasses of punch. Mm -hmm. She gets up and walks over to the drink station, mm -hmm. right? And what? guess what? 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 There was no punch line. That was funny, come on. Interview's Wait, over. come back. Interview's done. <laughs> well, I guess that's a wrap of this episode of the Director's Share. Be sure to tune in next time. We have a great season for you all, and I'm excited to get started. Until then, I'm Alicia Saeed. Thank you, and good night. <laughs>